Mr. Chairman and their friends. I thank the International Human Rights Commission and Intergovernmental Organization and the World Youth Summit of Peace for hosting this webinar together. And I welcome those joining online around the world. We meet in this unusual way as we enter the last month of this unusual year. We are facing a devastating pandemic, new heights of global heating, new lows of technological degradation, and new setbacks in the world towards global goals for more equitable, inclusive, and sustainable development. To put it simply, the state of planet is broken. Dear friends, humanity. The state of planet is broken. Dear friends, humanity is waging war on nature. This is suicide. Nature always strikes back, and it is already doing so with growing force and fury. Biodiversity is collapsing. One million species are at risk of extinction. Ecosystems are disappearing before our eyes. Deserts are spreading. Wetlands are being lost. Every year, we lose 10 million hectares of forests. Oceans are overfished and choking with plastic waste. The carbon dioxide they absorb is acidifying the seas. Coral reefs are bleached and dying. Air and water pollution are killing 9 million people annually more than six times the current toll of the pandemic. And with people and livestock encroaching further into animal habitats and disrupting wild sp spaces, we could see more viruses and other disease-causing agents jump from animals to humans. Let's not forget that 75% of new and emerging human inf infectious diseases are zoonatic. The past decade was the hottest in human history. Ocean heat is at record levels. This year, more than 80% of the world's oceans experience a marine, marine heat wave. COVID-19 lockdown have temporarily reduced emissions and pollution, but carbon dioxide levels are still at record highs and rising. Today, we are at 1.2 degrees of warming and already witnessing unprecedented climate extremes and volatility in every region on every continent. We are headed for a thundering temperature of three to five degrees Celsius this year. The science is crystal clear. To limit temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, the world needs to decrease fossil fuel production by roughly 6% every year by now and 2030. Instead, the world is going in the opposite direction, planning an annual increase of 2%. The fallout of the assault on our planet is impeding our efforts to eliminate poverty and imperiling food security. And it is making our work for peace even more difficult as the disruptions drive, drive instability, displacement, and conflict. As always, the impacts fall most heavily on the world's most vulnerable people. Those who have done the least to cause the problem suffer the most. Even in the developed world, the marginalized are the first victims of disasters and the last to recover. It is no coincidence that 70% of the most climate vulnerable countries are also among the most politically and economical, economically fragile. It is not happenstance that 15 countries most sus susceptible to climate risks aid host a United Nations peacekeeping or special political mission. 
Pakistan is one of the eight, one of out of eight countries in my government, we took the bold steps to announce the emergency policy to deal with the severe electricity shortages facing Pakistan and civil nuclear technology and inaugurated two nuclear power plant in 2012. Further, my government also approved two more nuclear power plants to use the nuclear technology for peaceful and climate change friendly purposes and to end the threats due to climate change. My government initiated the Climate Action Plan towards the Green Pakistan with the leading role of Pakistani youth in 2011. My government also encouraged youth as as a driving force of Pakistan to emerge as leaders of today and to tomorrow and recruited young people in, in government as driving force of policy makers. Dear friends, let's be clear, human activities are at the root of our descent towards chaos. But that means human action can help solve it, making peace and with nature is the defining task of the 21st century. It must be the top priority of everyone, everywhere. In this context, the recovery of the pandemic is an opportunity, a sustainable economy driven by renewable energy will create new jobs, clear infrastructure, a resili resilient future, an inclusive world will help ensure that people can enjoy better health and the full respect of their human rights and live with dignity on a healthy planet. COVID recovery and our planet's repair can, recovery can be, repair can be two sides of the same coin. Dear friends, let me start with climate em emergency. We face three imperative in addressing the climate crisis. First, we need to achieve global carbon neutrality within the next three decades. Second, we have to align global finance behind the Paris Agreement, the world's blueprint for climate action. Third, we must deliver a breakthrough on adaptation to protect the world and especially the most vulnerable people and countries from climate impact. I firmly believe that 2020... ...what can be a new kind of leap towards carbon neutrality. Dear friends, renewable energy is now the first choice, not just for the environment, but for the economy but there are worrying signs. Some countries have used the crisis to roll back environmental protections. Others are expanding natural resource exploitation and retreating from climate ambition. The G20 members in their rescue packages are spending 50% more on sectors linked to fossil fuel production and consumption than on low carbon energy. And beyond announcements, all must pass a credibility test. Let me take the example of shipping. If the shipping sector was the country, it would be the world's sixth biggest greenhouse gas emitter. Dear friends, let's remember there can be no separating climate, climate action from the larger planetary picture. Everything is interlinked the global commons and global well-being. That means we must act more broadly, more holistically across many fronts to secure the health of a planet on which all life depends. Nature feeds us. Generates our oxygen, shapes our culture, and our faith and forges on very identity. 2020 was to have been a super year of nature. 
the pandemic had had other plans for us. Now we must use 2021 to address the planetary emergency. Let's also recognize the central role of women. The impacts of climate change and environmental degradation fall most heavily on women. They are 80% of those displaced climate change. But women are also the backbone of agriculture and key steward of natural resources. They are among the world's leading environmental human rights defenders. And women's representation in national parliaments is linked directly to the signing of climate action activities. As humankind devices, strategies for natural resources, governance, environmental preservation, and building a green economy, we need more women decision makers at the table. Dear friends, let, let's pay tribute to our youth and younger generation for leading the climate action campaign across the world. More and more people, especially the youth, understand the need for their own daily choice to reduce their carbon footprints and respect planetary boundaries. And we see inspiring waves of social mobilization of young people from protests in the streets to advocacy online. From, from classroom education to community engagement, from voting booths to places of work. Young people are pushing their elders to do what is right. This is a moment of truth for people and planet alike. COVID and climate have brought us to a threshold. We cannot go back to the old normal of equality injustice and heedless dominion over the earth. Instead, we must step towards a safer, more sustainable and equitable path. Now is the time to transform humankind's relationship with natural world and follow the demands made by our youth who are changing the world with their resilience and leading growth. We must acknowledge and appreciate their timely struggle, struggle to awake the whole world on environmental issues. And we must do so together. Let's empower and encourage our youth to find out the prosperous way of common future. Solidarity is humanity. Solidarity is survival. That is the lesson of 2020. With the world is disunity and disarray, trying to contain the pandemic. Let's learn the lesson and change course for the pivotal period ahead. In the end, I must pay gratitude to the International Human Rights Commission and its leadership for acting timely on the issues humankind facing and giving me this opportunity to stand with those who are standing on the right side of history for humanity, earth, human rights, equality, and justice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, this is